Hello and welcome. Our topic today is monthly team capacity planning. We will be planning for our capacity of our team for next month and we will be using the resource capacity planner Excel template to do this. So this is what we're going to do in, in our exercise today. We have input about our team and which is there are five employees. We are going to have them uh, into three different skill groups and then they all have different working hours and then the team has holidays and then also the each employee can have their own vacations during the month as well. And what we want to achieve is to have a very good realistic and reliable information about what the capacity of the team is in each skill group that would allow us to go to our leadership and then make commitment to how much work can be done based on the capacity of the team and then if there is any specific demand from the leadership on how much work needs to be done then we will be able to easily compare the our capacity with the demand and identify gaps if there are any and uh, which skill sets have deficit capacity versus surplus and make the right decisions so that we arrive at a plan which is feasible which is realistic and also which is maximizing our capacity against the demand that we have so we will see how we can do this using the template so now let's get started with the blank template and we will be entering information about the inputs and then we will see how the template can help us gather the output in an automated and efficient way. So this is our resource capacity planner Excel template. So what we're going to first do is to choose the demand aggregation level to be daily because we are going to be planning for the entire month of March. Uh, as we are in February now. So I'm going to choose, let's say the start date would be March 1st and then the end date would be March 31st. And I'm going to leave the weekends as Saturday, Sunday because that's my organization's weekends. So we won't be having any capacity during the weekends. I'm going to leave the planning unit in hours for this exercise because what we're interested in is calculating the capacity of the team in number of hours of work and so I'm going to leave the hours. Holidays as I mentioned we are going to have a couple of holidays one would be the 15th of March and the other one would be let's say 24th of March so I enter it this way and now we have input holidays. The next input in the setting sheet is the skill groups so let's again think that there are three different skill groups in our or team or organization and the uh, I'm not going to focus too much on the cost side for this case study uh, and the pro project manager is the first skill group and then we have developer and then we have let's say tester. So these are the three different skill groups that we have in our team. That's it. So this is our basic input information in the settings. Now we have to go to the resources sheet and then we have to provide the list of employees in our team and also what is their availability. So I'm going to start typing our employee information right here. So let's do project manager starts on March 1st. And then let's say that this person works eight hours Monday through Friday. And the skill group will be project manager. And then I'll go and enter the next few employees as well. Okay, so now we have entered all the five employees and the first two employees work eight hours a week day and then the next two employees work four hours a week day and then the last employee works six hours a week day and we have put them into the right skill group. So we have two developers and developer one and two and then we have two testers, test and one, tester one and tester two. So this is our input information on standard availability of our employees. Now let's go to the vacation overtime data and then let's enter any vacation that they may be planning to take. So let's say the, the developer one is going to be out for uh, the whole eight hours. That's the usual work time for that person. And because it's vacation, I'm putting minus eight. 
And then similarly, let's say developer two is also going to be out on the same day and that employee usually works four hours. So we put a vacation of four hours. So that person will also be not available for the 11th of March. And let's say the tester one is not going to be available for six hours. And this is, um, let's make it tester two. Tester two actually works for six hours during every weekday. So let's say that this person on 8th March is not going to be available taking vacation. So let's keep it very simple. So let's just have only three vacation entries. And with this input information, now let's go and see the capacity data for our team. So this is our capacity. So this is automatically calculated for you. It breaks it down by day from the 1st of March all the way to the 31st of March. And any holiday like the 15th of March, you will see that we don't have any capacity. And similarly, 24th of March is not is a holiday. And so we don't have capacity. And then Saturday, Sundays are also do not have any capacity. You can go to the summary sheet to now get the summary data about our availability or capacity. So we have 612 total hours of capacity, and then it breaks it down by how many hours of project manager skill that we have and developer and tester. Note that this is at this point, um, this is only the capacity, and this is the buy skill set for the entire month. So the capacity of the entire month is shown here versus capacity broken down by each day is shown in this sheet. So this is very useful information. This allows you to have a very meaningful conversation with your leadership and say, this is our capacity for next month based on the inputs that we have provided. This is what we are capable of delivering in terms of number of hours for the entire month of March. And most of the cases you're going to have, you already have some demand, meaning you know that there is certain amount of work that needs to be done in, in the next month. So that's where the demand sheet comes in. We're going to be entering some information here, which will be the demand. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to assume that the demand is all consistent. So let me just enter that data here now. So I'm saving time by already copying that information somewhere from somewhere else. But basically you can type in or copy and paste as values from other sheets uh, if you have them. So eight hours for the project manager every workday and then for developer it's 10 and then for tester it's eight. So this is our demand. So now let's go to the summary sheet first where now we will see the demand parts of the charts get populated. So our total demand is 546 hours and that's about 89% right demand by capacity. So we do have some surplus there. And the, the hours chart now will tell you that the by skill group and comparison of the capacity versus demand. I, I want to emphasize again and again, if you have different skill groups, it's very important that you look at it by the uh, skill group chart because overall you may have excess capacity or surplus, but if you don't have enough in a specific skill group, you still have a problem because if the skill groups are not interchangeable, then you, you, you will not be able to meet the demand for one skill group. So it's very important that this chart uh, is taken very, very seriously. And as you scroll further down, you will see the surplus or deficit calculation. We can clearly see project manager, we are meeting the demand exactly. So this could be a risk, this could be okay, depending on your organization's priorities, but we do have some surplus hours in the other two skill set, which again, there is always a cost to these surplus um, capacity. Um, and I'm not gonna uh, delve deep into that, but the, the bottom line here is that instantly the template will tell you what is the availability, what is the surplus that we or deficit we have within each skill group. Now, now that we know this at the monthly level, overall, we don't have any deficits. So by the end of the month, you should be able to meet all the demand with some surplus capacity in these two skill groups. That should be okay. But if in your organization, it's not about cumulative capacity versus demand, you need to meet the demand every single workday. Then we need to go to the surplus deficit sheet where you will see the daily breakdown. 
So this is where it gets interesting. So you have a couple of negative values there. The negative values indicate that you have a deficit in capacity. So that means your, uh, for example, 11th of March, you need 10 hours of work of developer time, but you actually don't. And so it's negative 10. So that's the, um, the implication of the the red negative values. So you will not be able to meet the demand on 11th March of with the developer skill set. So as I said before, if you if in your organization you need to meet demand every single day, then this is a big red flag. So what are you going to do about these two negative values? So there are a few ways to handle it. So one is um, we can definitely go back to the resources sheet and if you have the option to increase the availability of any of these developer or tester resources um, on certain weekdays, then that will allow you to meet the, the deficit here. But the key, one thing to keep in mind there is that if you're increasing the availability here, that means, let's say that we increase the availability of the Wednesday for the developer to, to be eight hours. So that means that it's not only going to increase the availability on that one day, it will increase for every Wednesday for that developer. So you have to keep that in mind. If your need to address the demand is only for one specific day, um, then you we have we'll go through the other options. But if you have a deficit consistently across all days, then you can definitely go and increase the standard availability. So that is the first option, increasing the availability uh, of existing employees in this table. The other option it would be to do overtime. So let's say, for example, the tester. Um, so let's say tester one is can do the overtime on March 8th and he's going to do for six hours. So I'm going to put that or four hours and this is going to be plus four hours because this is the um, overtime. So it should be positive. And now when I go to the surplus deficit sheet, I don't have the 8th of March deficit because I have filled that gap by adding overtime for tester one. So that is the second solution, which is adding overtime for existing employees. The third option is to add new employees to the mix. If you have in your organization, if you have the authority and the permission and the uh, availability of resources to actually add a new employee, then you can do that too. So for example, let's say I add a new developer and again, you can do it um, cons for a longer duration, but in our case study here, what we have is a deficit only on 11th March. So I could do this as a temporary hire, and this could be a person, you know, a temporary hiring person, or it could be a person you are borrowing from another team in your company just for one day. So you could say this is going to be Friday. So I'm going to make this person available for 10 hours on that day. And this is going to be a developer resource and I don't want so let's go to the surplus deficit and see what happens now you have that uh, this per, the deficit has gone but it's added the surplus for you for every Friday you have a lot of surplus availability so in order to address that what I will do is put an end date for this person on March 11th so this means this new developer 3 will be working 10 hours only on 11th March and after that, this person's services will not be needed for this project, right? So then we can go to the surplus deficit and we will see that there's no more red negative values, which means we are meeting every day's demand. And on some days, we also have some surplus, but the surplus is not that high. So let's go back to the summary sheet. And now you'll see that we have surplus. We are okay by the skill group and overall, the um, the capacity and the demand comparisons are here. We are at 87% now. And um, as I said before, the there is no, I'm not trying to say that a specific demand to capacity ratio is right because it depends on your organization's scenario and the cost of having an extra surplus hour or the cost of having a deficit of one hour. Um, it varies by organization, it varies by the type of business. 
So I'm not trying to make judgment on what is right. It's all about explaining that the template is very flexible where you can um, play with the inputs on the availability of resources and you can add overtime or add temporary employees or um, there's so many ways that you can play with the availability or the capacity in order to meet the demand that you have and also highlighting the fact that it makes it so simple to communicate with your leadership what is your capacity are we going to meet the demand where is, where are the gaps where is the deficit what can we do to overcome that deficit and this is and all of these are easily printable or exported to pdf and shared so that's the main thing i want to highlight in this template and there are also additional features like you can create an employee report by just choosing uh, any specific employer uh, employee and then you will see the day by day you know availability of that employee so um so that's where the strength of the template lies, keeping it very simple uh, and doing all the hard calculations behind the scenes to calculate the capacity by day or by week, depending on how you want to aggregate the data, and then creating some good summary uh, statistics which you can share with your leadership or within your team to have a very clear idea about what are we capable of doing in the next month and also will we be able to meet our demand. So if um, you find other ways to use this template, I will, I really look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and also, if there are any questions about what we discussed in this template so far, please leave them in the comments and I'll be very, very happy to respond. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video.